Good evening, this is Angie from Angie Sum. I am a Ben Summer. I started my own business about five years ago selling kind of cool wines to a small group of my tribe people. So it has been a while since I did a wine review because I've been recently diagnosed with cancer and through some of the initial treatment I wasn't really able to drink. So I'm glad to be back again. Today we're actually tasting a 2013. I'm sorry the screen is flipped, but it is a Lucien Albrecht the 1698 Cremant de Alsace. So 1698, I believe is the year the winery was funded. This is the Alsace part of France. So it is a part that border Germany and it's in back and forth between German and France, you know, between the World Wars and whatever have you. Uh, and a lot of the writings and words there is like a cross between German and French, a very interesting region. Um, I came across this deal, so I was offered a pretty awesome deal. As you know, if you know me, you know that I look for wines that has cool story, but usually when it's being offered by the winery, it was an amazing deal. And because of the pandemic since the 2020, there's a lot of wines like that out in the market. This one initially, I'm just going to go right out. I was a little worried because of two reasons. One, it was a 2013 vintage and I actually was not familiar with this label. So my initial thought was 2013 wasn't the best vintage in France. So I thought maybe it was a back vintage that the winery was having problems selling. So they're trying to close it out. Uh, so I wanted to make sure I get a bottle of sample before I decide if I want to sell it or not. Um, and it is... Um, Pretty, I mean, this producer actually makes quite a bit of wine from Alsace, but this label, I think, is one of their more flagship, more um, exclusive blends, so it's harder to find. It's a smaller production. So it is made with 100% Chardonnay, and because it says Cremant de Alsace, Cremant literally just means a word that tells you that this wine is done in the traditional champagne method, but it's not from champagne, because unless it is from champagne, you cannot call it champagne. Um, and... The information I have in there, I, I think there's some typo and some uh, loss in translation because it was saying something like it was uh, stirred in leaves in, uh, for nine months and then aged in oak barrel for six years. So I think what it meant was it was bar barrel fermented for nine months and then maybe aged on leaves for six years. So it makes more sense, and which is actually impressive because most non-vintage champagne is 18 months and vintage is 36 months. So six years is pretty extended amount of time aging on its lease. So meaning if this, this is a 2013 release, um, aging uh, on lease for six plus year, this is pretty spanking new release for 2013. So that probably is not something that's been sitting around for a while. Um, and 12.5% alcohol, I believe the sugar level on this one is about 6.5 gram of sugar per liter, which is still considered the brute level, which is just under what normal human can detect as far as sweetness on the palate. And just so you know, because it's not champagne, I'm never expected to, you have to adjust your expectation. Um, and I was just talking to my husband because we we're trying this together for the first time. Um, I thought on the news, again, I think the reason why champagne is champagne, and I think everyone loves it, is because of the very special combination of the terroir, the soils, um, and kind of the climate that creates a really highly mineral and very uh, good, like a like lively, racy acidity type of sparkling wine, which I find is really hard to duplicate elsewhere, unless from England. English sparklings are killing it, but then... I even then I feel like sometimes the English sparkling wine doesn't quite have that minerality, that chalkiness, that uh, oyster shell feeling that you get from uh, champagne. So there's a reason champagne, champagne, and you can't beat it. But it's always cool to find cheaper alternative that I think is made in um, it was like that good style and with quality. Now with this wine, I find very unique and um i purposely not try not to geek out too much because sometimes when you geek out too much before you taste the wine you have a lot of expectation and you kind of make the wine to taste like the way you think it's supposed to taste so sometimes it's good to just taste it you know a little bit of information but don't go too much um i find that interesting because when you are blind tasting wines from alsace alsace to me all their white grapes always have that kind of a, a waxy honeycomb, a thick 
apple skin type of smell to it and i get up on this wine too and also it's very floral so on the nose to me instead of that really um like chalky sharp minerality that you get from a, a champagne i'm getting more of that rounded like i said bee wax a little more flower like yellow flowers more like a lot of bouquet thing happening again you have to stick your nose in there without too much expectation because okay. my husband is very spoiled on champagne so he's just like hey that's a smell like champagne i'm like yeah this is not but i, I kind of get some honeysuckle yes exactly yeah. that like good good ob ob observation if you hang around with uh, next to me for 10 years, you'll have just as good of a palate as the, the my amateur husband. Um, so yeah, honey Sarko. <laughs> Sorry. I wish you could see him right now. He's a little shy, but he's okay asking questions behind the camera. So I thought it was actually quite interesting. Again, very different than what you expect from um, your traditional champagne. But I think it's great, it, especially, okay. I think it actually does have quite a quite a bit of acidity. It does, right, in the back end, yeah, but, yeah. but it's hard to tell in the beginning yeah. because it's very floral, it's big, it's actually bouquet-y, so, um, so it, it masks over. Like, I keep telling people that, especially with wines like German Rieslings or any wines that's off dry, a lot of times people forget how much acidity is actually in the wine because it's being balanced out by other aspect of the wine. Just like sometimes with a California Cabernet, you forget how high the alcohol is because there's so much tannin, there's so much uh, extraction and fruit and the oak. And then once everything balances out, you forget the wine is like 15.5% alcohol and you're drunk after two glasses. So yeah, this wine, I think it's well made. It's, it's just, I mean, it's very floral. Again, you don't think about how much acid is in there, but because of the extended least aging, there is complexity. It lingers in your mouth. So it's kind of cool, especially for the price point. Because there's just no way you'll find a quality champagne under $30 a bottle. Um, trust me, I tried it, including the one from Costco. Mm. <laughs> so, what, would yes. you, what would you pair this with? Yeah, I was just thinking about that earlier. Um, it's such a cliche. Because my, my first reaction was, we're going to pair with Chinese food. But then it's kind of the freaking generic answer was every sparkling wine, every German Riesling and every random slightly off drive sparkling wine people talk about with Chinese food. And Chinese food is so vast. So I, I was trying to like narrow the down in my mind on what kind of Chinese food. But I think the way I think about it is there's a lot of different Chinese food cuisine. I will pair this with some type of meaty white fish. Um, I think, is it flounder or halibut? I can't remember the, the flat fish. That's like yay big. I, oh, oh. It's a halibut, right? So I eat that growing up and the preparation for it is quite simple. The way we used to do it in our family is to just, you know, clean it well. And we pan sear it with just a light touch of oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of white pepper, and maybe some green onion and ginger. Now, the reason why I'm going with that and the thing I want to focus on is the preparation. I want something done simply because I don't want a ton of uh, spiciness and whatever have you because it is, a, it, even though it's very floral, I think for a sparkling wine, it's got a big nose. It's actually quite showboy for that, in that matter. Um, so you, it, you can stand up to something a little more complex than say your classic shrimp cocktail or oyster. But I, it's not so crazy complex where I wanted to pair this with something that's overly salty, deep fried or uh, spicy or really heavily sauce. So that's why I'm narrowing it down with a simple fish dish that won't overpower it, but it's done with, a, that gets a little more kick because when, when you pan sear it, you create more of a meatier, steaky texture. So it just gives the fish a little more oomph that can pair with the complexity, that additional layer and the floral and that body, that uh, extended bottle aging that they do in this bottle. Now, hmm. With that being said, I know that this bottle, because it's kind of a rare thing, is, I think it's one of the higher end uh, wine that they produce. It retails for $40 a bottle, which I think is re really fair. 
for a, a bottle of wine that's made with 100% Chardonnay that's done a 100% malolactic, you know, barrel aging and then leaves aging for six plus years. It is, it just, it, when it comes to sparkling wine, it's just a labor intensive work um, or traditional method sparkling wine. Um, but with that being said, I told you I got an amazing deal on this. If you're interested, I do have a link below with the discounted price and they are first come first serve because it is a smaller production until sold out. But I think as Chinese New Year com is coming up um, and Valentine's Day coming up and just for people who love sparkling wine on a random Tuesday, Thursday, any day, any afternoon, this will be a really great alternative to champagne. And in addition to that, I also think this is a great a uh, gateway sparkling wine to champagne. I find that, oh, my husband's nodding. Are you agreeing? Because I, why do you think that? Sorry, I'm jumping in. Oh, no, 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 I, I, I'm just agreeing. Oh, you're just you agreeing with yeah. me. Yeah. All right, <laughs> I'm just saying the reason why I think it's a good gateway sparkling wine to introduce someone to before they really get into champagne is sometimes I find people have a hard time jump straight into champagne from, let's just say, Prosecco or not drinking sparkling wine at all because the champagne does have a very high searing acid for most of them, for most part. I mean, not all, but for most part. But this one, like I said, has a little more generous fruits aroma on the nose and a rounder mouth feel. And I think it's just a better, easier transition before you decide to throw people into the deep end on a good, like, mineral-driven, uh, really high-acidity sparkling wine. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this wine as much as I did. If you tried it or you had it before, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think about the wine. And feel free to reach out to me if you have any question by leaving a comment, emailing me directly at ng.sum, or in info, <laughs> or emailing me directly at info at Consider joining my wine club or subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much. I will see you again soon.